you really do. You're a 21 year old punk fucking kid. This grandpa's given you everything all your fucking life. You've never had a car payment, a house payment. Everything you live in was given to you by grandpa. You fucking don't know what it's like to work for a fucking living like I do. To bust my fucking ass and do what I do. And you know what, Sean? You fucked me, and that's the way you got it. But you know what? Your grandpa's money will run out someday, and you'll have to feast for yourself. Get a fucking job, you piece of shit. Welcome to Behind the Smoke Podcast. My name is Sean Walcheff from Cali Comfort Barbecue, and we are above the butcher shop here in Spring Valley. Uh, we're here with Derek Marceau, my man. What's up? What are you guys man. doing? You guys screwing around already? <laughs> Can't even get the podcast started properly? I just like to fuck with Corey. Jesus. I like to fuck with Corey a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> no, man, things are good. Things are great. Um, getting ready to... Head out to Nebraska and Wisconsin next week. So, ooh, I heard about that. Pretty, pretty. Heard about that on a that. podcast. Someone, yeah, someone. Uh, is that Kyle? Yeah, Kyle's. Their their harvest is flying me out to uh, Nebraska to Greater Omaha. Gonna go check out their packing plant. Make sure everything's on the up and up. Is Kyle where, gonna be there with you? Um, Jonathan will be there. My salesman Nick will be there, and Kenny, my other salesman. Yeah, um, Kyle. Kyle's too busy, man. He's oh, really? Big dog. Do. He's, uh, you know, I hope. I told him I said I hope. At one point, he wants to go up to the Pacific North, Northwest when they're doing that, um, where they bring in the 18 wheeler and do the sale for all the meat. Mm -hmm. He wants to uh, go up up there with me and kind of show me what they're doing. So, okay, we'll, we'll make a, a trip out of that. But yeah, it should be exciting. We're going to go to the grass, grass feed run um, in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Are you going to be live tweeting? So yeah, you, can follow you know you. it. You know <laughs> it. You know it. I'm actually going to read my You got to at least give some, you got to give us something, like, a little behind the no, smoke. No, I'll Come definitely on, give, try. Give us, a, give us a little love. You just have to uh, text me and remind me. I will. I'll, I'll forget. I but, will. Or I'll, yeah. I'll text you about the tweet that I sent you. Yeah, exactly. I have a, a few buddies that, college buddies that are in Nebraska, so That's I hang cool. out with them and have some uh, adult beverages. There you go. Well, speaking of uh, things that were pretty cool, I went to up to the U.S. Food Show, um, and they had a virtual tour of the stockyards. Which was actually really, really badass. You know, so I, you're telling me I don't have to fucking go to Nebraska? No. For shit? I could have just gone to the show and done a virtual reality. You could have done a virtual reality tour. Dude, what's um, our world coming to? I don't know. That's uh, aug aug fucking, augmented reality. That's gnarly. Where's your Bitmoji? Dude, I don't know. Your Snapchat <laughs> Bitmoji? You don't yeah. have one yet? This is Corey, we need, to, we need to help him out and get him a Bitmoji. I was get him listening on to Joe Rogan, and he was talking about how, or um, one of his last podcasts, how they, they can... If you just talk for two minutes, there's a, like an app that you can play your voice and make it say whatever you want, and it sounds just like you. Like it could be my Siri. Yeah, it could be Sean. You're, but you're, you're my wife fucked. would love. My wife would love that. <laughs> right, just multiple, multiple voices of Sean telling you what to do. Oh, that's funny. Well, uh, today is very, very special uh, for me. I uh, I attended when we opened the restaurant. I went to USD. They have an extension program for. Event management, uh, event <coughs> management certificate program. It's a nice school. Uh, well, I graduated from USD with a degree in sociology because I love people. I love studying uh, why they do what they do. I actually like it more oh, than fuck. I like business. I'm fucked. And you were fucked when you met me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, I, I I took this class, and one of the best things that came about the class was the relationship I developed with. Uh, our podcast guest today, and that is uh, Nicole Matthews. Welcome to Behind the Smoke. Thank you. It's a you. pleasure to have you I'm here. I'm super excited. Like, I'm so out of my element here on top Welcome. of a, a butcher shop. So this is going to be But amazing. out of your mel that that's why we, yeah. get, we get along so well yeah. is because of authenticity. And, right. Uh, you know, one of the things when I was taking your class, you always, you were someone that said, don't bullshit who you are. Right. You know, and I took that to heart and... Um, we're just so fortunate to have you here to talk about your book, Permission. Thank you. Um, give our listeners a little bit of, uh, you know, a quick two minute of who you are and what you do. Yeah, thanks so much. So first of all, um, can we just talk about how far you have come? Okay, I'm going to get to me in a minute. But like, I remember looking, I, I would stand in the front of the classroom, obviously, because they paid me to, you know, spew out bullshit. Right. So, and he was back there taking copious notes. It was like the greatest thing ever, right? I could totally see you were like in the back corner. He of, still of fucking the room, does it. Everywhere right? we go, he's always he's fucking a, taking notes. Taking notes. Well, yeah. that's why he's 
probably you know a gazillionaire by now. And I tell him, I'm like, I don't know make, make a copy of that, please. Make, <laughs> forward that along. Can I get those cliff notes? <laughs> yeah, tweet me about that, yeah. right? Tweet, tweet that, yeah. Um, okay, so let's see. Where do we begin? Um, for the last 10 years, I've owned a business called The Henley Company, which is an event management, personal concierge, lifestyle management company. So Henley we do, was your... Henley, listen. Everyone always gets confused. They think I'm Nicole Henley or Henley was a maiden name or a married name. It's not. Henley actually is Henley on Thames, which is a little town outside of London. Oh. And I worked in London to, in a neighboring town to Henley. And it just became this like perfect moment professionally, personally for me. And I made a promise to myself that when I was coming back to San Diego that I'd either name my first child or my business Henley. Rad. And so the That's business really cool. came, and there's still no babies, so <laughs> no baby Henleys. Right. But this is the one I've been um, giving birth to for a really long time. Sure. So, well, we know um, that yeah, right. Yeah. So this July, I just celebrated ten years of the Henley awesome. Company, which is amazing. Congratulations! That's Thank huge. you. I know it is. Huge. It's huge. It just like it. Tell, I'm just stunned. I can't even like. It's hard to imagine, especially in this economy. Like, it's, are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, ten right? years. I mean, you People were two thousand right? and seven. Yeah. You know, 2007. We opened our business in two thousand and eight. Yeah. And actually, Stacy Poonkinney, she just had her tenth anniversary. Ten years. Ten I mean, years. those ten years. Yeah. Talk, Did you talk do about the ups and downs. I haven't done anything yet, but I I feel like you know you have the tenth year. So yeah. just get off my back, okay? Like, <laughs> I, mean, I was just going to say, I like, like it. You're already yelling at him. I mean, <laughs> Let's pile on and yell more. Right. I was like, can we get some happy hour wine in here? Yeah. Like, just that would be more fun, bit? right? Exactly. Like, right. So um, listen, I was in corporate America for a long time, and I knew that that was just not going to be for me anymore. So um, I started bus- growing my business on the side, and then eventually the Henley Company um Gave, you know, I gave birth to the Henley Company, and now 10 years later. So in the last 10 years, we've done a ton of events on the corporate social side, and then I've also done a few Olympics. I've done some Super Bowls. I've done a FIFA program. So that's really where my heart sings because I get to use my passport and, you know, travel the world and do really cool events at the same time. So I'm super lucky when it comes to that. And then in 2014, the little, uh, the little book called Permission. Um, all came to be so um, and that's a and that's a big part of kind of my story and I wrote that the book permission because I would I've been teaching a long time and I'd have these students who'd come up to me or speaker you know after I'd get done speaking at a conference and somebody would come up to me and they'd say you know I want to be just like you I, I think it's amazing you've worked Olympics you've you know done all these cool things which is great I mean that's all great on paper but the reality is, is everybody has a backstory, right? It doesn't matter who's standing on stage giving the keynote presentation. The reality is, at some point, the wheels have probably come off the bus for them. Sure. And it's super easy to stand on the stage and tell people what to do. Yeah. Um, but it's totally different when, you know, it's your life. So I didn't want to be um, pretending that I was something that I wasn't. Um, I've had some really dark times in my life. And I've had, and I grew up in a family that, you know, was amazing and supportive and, for every reason I shouldn't have had dark times, but you know, self-esteem issues, depression, all sure. these kinds of things still sneak in. Yep. And I'm like, if it can happen to me and I grew up with like the most amazing family and support <coughs> in the world, if somebody didn't have that same situation, you know, I just wanted to be like, listen, everybody's had a backstory, right? right. Everybody's good. Just, just walk forward on your own path and give yourself permission to yeah. do that. Really? No, you, you know, own, that's own the yourself. Thing. That's great. Absolutely. Yeah. There's Absolutely. A, a lady named Whitney Cummings who, uh, kind of does the same thing and she's you know she's a comedian but Mm -hmm. she she's like man i have fucking demons i have i have things inside Uh, my uh, own head that uh, that are crazy she's like i I just have to own it and then and work through it and that's it's it's hard sometimes yeah i mean people are always surprised because again i mean i'm you know could stand in front of a room and deliver a, a keynote to hundreds of people and not blink an eye But if I had to go on a date, I would like literally pass out and throw up because like, you know, that one on one and just like then all of a sudden it's like a self-esteem thing. And like, oh, my God, what is he going to think? Like, I didn't care what 500 people thought, but I care what he thinks (laughs) sitting across the table for me. So, you know, we all have our crazy going on in our head. We just have to own it. Well, I think probably one of the best reasons why we have you here on this podcast Mm -hmm. is because of authenticity. Yeah. And I think, you know. When you're going through and you're marketing your company and you're trying to build your brand, one of the most important things that you do is to find your voice. Mm -hmm. Uh, Finding your voice really allows you to connect with people and allows you to connect with your students. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. how we connected. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you listen and you take action, then really amazing things can happen. And, you know, in your book, you talk about 
your vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And Derek and I, I mean, the reason why we start with that voicemail is those are our vo vulnerabilities. Yeah. Those are our dark times. And those are the things, the struggles mm -hmm. of owning a business, yeah. of being an entrepreneur, of mm -hmm. being in the barbecue world, of being right. in the event world. Mm -hmm. You know, things aren't always fucking perfect. Nope, you know, it's the all. sexy Instagram yeah. photo. I mean, that's, right. you know, part of our our deal is that that sexy Instagram photo, it, it, that that's the end result. Right. Like there's right. a war story. Chances yeah, are that yeah, to yeah. get to that photo. For sure. And um, talk about the process of writing this book and kind of, you know, where you got, cause there's so many conscious choices that you had to make about talking about clinical depression, about yeah. talking about, you know, your struggles in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. Just talk about how that process yeah. came about. So I had always felt like I had a book in me. Um, I didn't know, what that was going to look like or where, you know, when and where that was all going to come together. But I was at a, um, a meeting one day, kind of a networking thing. And a woman who was, um, I would call her probably not an agent, but like a literary coach was there. And, um, so she was talking about this process that she puts authors through to write their book. And, um, a friend who was sitting next to me said, like, you're going to talk to her after. Right. And I was like, well, I didn't really have a plan to, but, and, and it was just that little push. And so, you know, you got to listen to the voice in your head, right? Because that's, that's, you know, authenticity coming yes. through. And so um, I went up to her and I introduced myself and I said, you know, I've always thought about writing a book. I just don't know what that looks like or whatever. I said, I am a writer. I, I use that as a form of, you know, journaling therapy kind of thing. And she's like, great, send me stuff, you know, send me your stuff. I'll see. Because I had no idea. Was I good? Was I not, you know, just because my mom thinks I'm great doesn't right. mean, <laughs> sure. you know, I mean, you know, everyone gets a participation trophy nowadays, right? right. So. Um, yeah, so we sent her some stuff and, um, and she wrote back and she's like, we're going to do this in six weeks. And I was like, see, here's wow. the problem. Um, <laughs> and like every excuse in the book, right? right? I own a business. I teach. I, no I you know, I have no time. Right. I, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the reality is, is that if the book is in you, it shouldn't take longer than six weeks. Yeah. And so wow. she put me through my paces. Um, I would write like two chapters a week. We would get, I would have to send her my, my work by Saturday. She would edit Sunday. Wow. And then on Mondays we would always meet and, but, and we would talk about what I was going to write and very little on what I had written. Because when you write a book, the biggest thing is just get the words on a page. Yeah. You can always go back and edit you. But for me, I wanted to not edit while I was writing and she really wouldn't let me, which was helpful because otherwise then you start to change Sure. The, the the reality of that story or you, you start go, to produce it you produce it right, right? you yeah. produce it and then you start to take things out you're like ooh, i shouldn't have said that yeah whereas if you only move forward you've said it yes right and that's authenticity and then at the end you can go back and you can clean it up yeah so in six weeks i had a manuscript and um we i sent it i self-published um which is super common nowadays sure. right and like anybody can do it sure. I and mean, we could publish a book by the time the podcast is over today. Yep. And um, I sent it to my first publisher. And um, they, they said, we have to go through and do like a content curation and just make sure you're not saying anything that's going to get us all in trouble. And I was like, okay, like check the box. <laughs> like what am I, you know, I'm yeah. just a girl. Like what am I going to say? And they actually came back and they were like, ooh, we got a big problem. Really? Yeah. And so, as you know, I've talked about some very personal relationships well, that I've been in. And sure. I had changed all those names and I had, you know. I had, had you done that because of the literary coach or did you make a conscious decision? I made a conscious decision because I didn't really think that it was important of who that person was like in real life to the reader. Sure. I think it just was who's, who did that person represent. And I just felt like it was just going to be better all it the probably way around. Made, it probably made it easier. It does. Do you therapeutic to just to be able to. Um. Not all oh, of do you them. Ask them or like, no, uh, no. So I don't, I don't know how this all. Yeah. Works. So um, it I mean, depends. You can. You mm -hmm. can be like, I, there is one story in the book that I actually asked if I could tell the story, and um, it's about my uh, friends who have some trouble in their yes. marriage, and um, they were very gracious and allowed me. And they, I actually let them read that chapter, which is not something that you would normally do. But yeah. I just felt like, out of respect for our friendship, I just wanted them to be prepared so that they didn't get the hard copy sure. of the book and be like, holy shit, what did, like, this is, you know, oh my I, God, right. <laughs> like, who's this girl? Absolutely. Right. I mean, I, I find that so fascinating. I talked to Jim Trotter, who's, who, he wrote the book about Junior Seau, uh -huh. and that's a, a book that covers suicide. Sure. And he had to go and interview all of, you know, his mom, his dad, mm -hmm. his sister. So a lot of sensitive yeah. people and mm -hmm. getting that story right from an angle that is going to be critically looked at by other yeah. writers, other people. And right. it, it's a very difficult decision as an author, what yeah. you're going to do. And right. 
no matter what decision you make, now you're talking about you go and then the publishing right. company is like, well, hey. Yeah. So, okay. So, they so come no back matter to what me. decision yeah, you no, make, you, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So they come back to me and they're like, okay, we have a problem. So first of all, we need you to change all the names. And I was like, done. That's already happened. Okay. Now we need you to change your name. And I was what? like, what the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean? You want a fiction? <laughs> yeah, right? And I go, why? And they go, well, we just think it'd be better if you know, to like protect the innocent, if you will, if you would change your name. Because and they I don't want to get sued. Right. And so I said, no, that's not going to be a thing. I said, yeah. first of all, the yeah. book for me is, uh, is also a branding <laughs> Derek, issue. Derek is yeah. not down with that. Yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> no. So what am I supposed to say? Like, If up. I get hired to do a presentation, I'll be like, so Susie Smith couldn't make it today. Yeah, but right. Nicole Matthews is going to be here in her stead to tell yeah. to talk about permission. Like, that's stupid. About- so this is what it comes down to you can tell you can say whatever you want to say to me okay you can call me every name in the book you can say whatever it is you want to say every vile thing in the world as soon as i tell sean what you've told me i've now invaded your privacy and that's where they got me in the Such publishing a world fucking sensitive world right yeah Jeez. and so then i was that's like ridiculous. yeah that's not going to be a thing yeah. So I ended up breaking my first contract with my pr- um, publisher because I was like, I'm not it's doing not that. Happening. I'm not no. doing that. It, because now it goes against the whole reason the why I right? wrote this yeah. book. Well, Fuck. And, that, and that's the other thing, too. I'm giving myself permission to right. write this fucking book. Right, Fuck right, you. Right. And the ironic thing is, is I'm telling stories about like the men in my life holding this power. And I was like, here we go again. Yes. Right? Because now all of a sudden, I've written it. It's my story as I interpreted it. I was there. I'm not telling someone else's story. I'm telling my yes. story. But yet the men in my life who had said those things yes. or had done those things now all of a sudden had the power. Now so, they got the power back. Sure. Right? Yeah. They got the power back. And I was like, this is insane. Yeah. So I kind of had to have a, like a little minute, you know. And so then a, a few months later, I found a different publisher. And then, boom, here we go. Wow. So they were much, you know, they were they were a lot. Not that they didn't pay attention to that kind of stuff, but they we, we worked around it, if you That's will. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So, well, yeah. So six weeks, start to finish. That's and amazing. A That's year crazy. to publish. Sometimes That's it takes me six weeks to write an email. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Sean's like, dude, are you going to get Twelve back weeks to me? for I'm a like, tweet. Twelve weeks for a tweet. A minute. Did you read that fucking email I yeah. sent you? Yeah. <laughs> right. I didn't publish it yet, buddy. A right. lot. Seriously. It's in my draft get box. Get yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So let's talk a little bit more, get a little bit deeper in into the book. Okay. You know, let's talk about, um, you know, what were the what were the biggest challenges actually of what that outline is going to be and where you wanted to go with it. Yeah. So I would say anybody who wants to write a book, the biggest thing is the outline. Okay. So you got to basically outline where, what are my points? What, you know, what am I trying to convey when the reader gets finished reading my book? Like, what do I want them to walk away with? Right. You know what I was just thinking, Sean, this is all kind of fucking making sense. <laughs> Cause you just came to me two weeks ago and you're like, Hey, I got to talk to you about something. <laughs> and I'm like, authentic what? intention. Yes. And I'm like, what? like a book we gotta write a book yeah uh-huh. this is fucking making sense see? okay see? I, I, I see what you did here yeah see, you like how right. i did that right. i'm always in your head it just doesn't matter this how i get in your head exactly. <laughs> right. I'm like your little next thing you puppet. know you're gonna start fucking podcasting <laughs> yeah. i come to derek i'm like hey we should you know what do you think about podcasting He's like yeah. what are you talking about yeah and then next week we are doing it that's great i love it yeah. see you need that person in your life right you need the pusher sure you need the pusher. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the seed planter. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, good for you. So, okay. So your your outline, super, super important. Mm-hmm. Like that to me is the most important part. People get all hung up and like, what am I going to say? Write down what you want is, what you want to talk about. Yeah. Right? Okay. So once we get a great outline, then what you do is you go back and you go, what are the two to three stories, points, case studies, whatever it might be that's going to drive that point home, right? So now when you sit down to write, you already have those stories in your mind. And then the writing really becomes about connecting those stories together. So it makes sense to the reader, right? But you can just sit down and tell that story and then tell the next story and then figure out how to connect those stories together. Sure. And boom, there's, there's your first chapter, that's- right? So it doesn't have to be harder. People get hung up like, how am I going to write, you know, 300 pages? Don't worry about it. The words are going to come. Yeah, I for think, my, tell my your college stories. stuff, I did a whole lot of copying and pasting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it'd go well in, the, in my book. Do you think the NCAA should really know about that? <laughs> don't, don't they have a, Don't they have enough problems they're, right now with basketball? They don't need to. They're, they're they don't need to get degree. to football, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I got my degree, man. That's good. Perfect. They can't take it away from you no. now. Well, right. that's. I, I mean, one of the things I really like is that the process <laughs> for exactly what you're talking about is it relates to podcasting a yeah. lot because. Yeah. You know, we are big advocates of 
people that are building their brand, building their business mm -hmm. to get involved in the podcast right. medium. Right. Um, you know, we went to the podcast movement yeah. just recently. I was on a call with national barbecue association. Yeah. We're going to go to their trade show in um, March at the stockyards. And we're actually going to put on a class about podcasting Great. for other business awesome. uh, barbecue owners. Yeah. See what he makes me do. I love See? it. Look at that. Yeah. I'm already, you're already there yeah. putting on classes. Yeah. Right, exactly. Who, well, you who your... do you think I'm going to ask to review our, our notes? Yeah. Right. I was just going to say, are you, you going to have your book by then? Uh, you, that's like, what, how many months? Six months oh. from now? I mean, come on, boys. I, I, could, I, could, have, I could do 10 Jeez. books in that exactly, amount of time. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> Overachievers. Listen, Overachievers. Get on it. <laughs> Get on it, we but know who no, the but but is. but part of that is you know we talk you just talked about you know produce like worrying about what are you going to say on the podcast and yeah. really the most important thing for us was finding out why did we want to do it yeah and we wanted to do it to share our story with other people that right. are going to open up a business they are running a business um, possibly they're in events yeah. um, maybe they're thinking about throwing an event for their business right. why they should self produce an event yep. um, things like that and. You can't get hung up on why and how it's going to sound and how perfect it's going to be. You kind of just have to do it. Right. You know, and yeah. doing it is doing what most people don't do. And that's, you know, you talk about multiple times where you were at a conference and somebody was leading that and you took that uncomfortable step mm -hmm. of raising your hand. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. let's let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so the story you're referring to, I was at a, a, an event industry conference. Yes. Um, actually in New Orleans and um, I had gone to see one of the speakers that um, I had been a big you know I was kind of girl fanning over if you will uh, her name is Marley Major and she owns a company out of Los Angeles called the Party Goddess and she's really the first one in our industry in the last decade who said um, is anyone actually making money? <laughs> like, right. Right? Are we just throwing these events yeah. just, just to be cool? And I mean, it's kind of one of those like kick in the guts because I'm sure it happens in every industry, but my industry in particular is so about like, I'm doing this event and that event and these clients and celebrity stuff and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, yeah, but you make a dollar. At the yes. end of the day, you make a dollar. Okay, let's, you know, so you're in People Magazine. Great. And that's the story she tells is that she was in People Magazine and, and she was, you know, so excited about that because she had done an event that was worthy of People Magazine. And her dad even said to her, yeah, but are you making any money? Right. So she had this whole platform of are you making money? So I was sitting in the back of of this session and there is literally probably 350 people in this session. I mean, she just, she kills you're it. You're late. Were you I'm, late? I, I'm late. Yeah. I'm late. I'll, I'll admit. So I'm like literally sitting in the back row. Cause usually you wouldn't be in the back. No, I wouldn't be in the back. Yeah. Well, it depends. It depends. It depends <laughs> on what, what jam I'm jamming to that that's day. Cool, yeah. That's cool. That's <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, if I'm not in the front teaching, yeah. I'm probably in the back. <laughs> probably in the back. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so she's going on and on and on about all these ways that event planners can leave money on the table. And um, all of a sudden, like, I feel like my hand, like, just literally goes up in the air. And I had just left <laughs> my grandma, like, probably six months before that. And so I really think it was, like, a divine intervention where my grandma was like, hello, fool. Like, don't miss this opportunity, yep. right? So I raise my hand and I, and I say to Marley in front, you know, now there's 350 people between her and I. And um, I said, I think everything you're talking about is amazing. I said, the one thing I would say is that event planners are not great about self-producing our own events because we do that for other people. Why are we not our own client? And so then I went on to talk about the fact that I had self-produced this event for the opening of the movie Sex and the City back in 2008 and how it was a huge success. I mean, it was like crazy successful. Um, and so she was like, what are you talking about? Like, tell me more. And so we kind of had this dialogue across the room and she then said to everybody in the room, she goes, I know You've all come to see me. She goes, but if you don't get that girl's card and talk to that girl after, she's like, I can't even help you. That's rad. Right? Really so cool. it was super cool, right? So, of course, and then she's like, come see me after. So, of, of course, I did, right? And so um, she's like, tell me more about, you know, where are you? And I was like, San Diego. She's in L.A. So that's super easy. And Sex in the City 2 was coming up. And, um, and so I asked her if she wanted to joint produce that event with me. So we did it in San Diego. My company did it in San Diego. And then I joint produced it with her out of Los Angeles. And then I had also written a handbook um, that we sold to seven other cities across the country. So for Sex in the City 2, it was like my concept, my recipe, right? Yeah. So I'll give you the ingredients. How your cake turns out sure. is up to you. But like, here's the ingredients to do this. Um, and it was, and it just became the beginning of a, you know, an amazing friendship with Marley. Like she's one of my dearest friends. That's rad. To this day, and so it was. It's being uncomfortable in in 
in um, offering something to the person who's the expert in the room, yes. right? Because so often you're just there to be the like, oh, they know everything, yes. right. right? So taking that moment to be like, yes, and. Yes. And then also being brave enough to say, I'm a colleague of hers. She's not better than I am. You know, yes. her, brand, her brand and her reputation might be bigger than mine, but we're still colleagues in this industry. I, I can still have a conversation with her. She's well, that, touchable. That's when you look at it from a colleague level yeah. and an industry level. Right, you right, know, right, And that's right. what's allowed us in this podcast. Yeah. It's not just our restaurant. You know, it's not right. Cali Comfort. Right. It's not Valley Farm. It's, you know, what can we do for barbecue, right. you know, in on the West Coast? What can we right. do for events, for right. sports entertainment, you know, yep. play, places that restaurants that want to add sports entertainment. And the more that we do that, the more that we learn from other people. And, it, right. you know, it, it really changes everything it changes and it also changes the industry which is so helpful for everybody yes. you know i mean the better that you get, both get hopefully somebody learns from you and then they get better and then yes. the whole industry gets better that's you know? really what we try to do and I, I have kind of been coming to the realization that you know leaders don't just lead um and have people follow them mm -hmm. what they have to do is inspire yeah so michael jordan might not have been the best leader, but he inspired so many people because so many people got to see him. Yeah. So, I mean, how many times when we were kids, you're outside playing basketball, oh, you're all like, the time. I want to be like Mike, right? Yeah. You want to do things. And he, he would inspire young kids by not even talking to them, but then yeah. him just seeing what he was doing. And that's what we try to do. It's like, okay, yeah. how can I, how can I not just have my employees follow me, but how can I inspire them right. to be better people? Right. And then that just does that. What, what do they call it? The, um, the candle. Where you just pass one yeah. candle, right. one fire to someone else, and then they just keep yeah. passing. Then all of a sudden, it's just a movement, right. and everyone keeps going right. with you. That's a, you know, that's a really important for I mean, us. One of the the funny thing uh, that just reminded me, I listened to a podcast called Entree Leadership, mm -hmm. and they had a coach on there that was an assistant coach for the Dream Team. <coughs> so the Dream oh, Team okay. with Michael Jordan, yeah. Magic Johnson. I mean, the best basketball team, the best talent ever assembled, and they're talking about. The assistant coach was talking to the head coach, who was Chuck Daly, and he was like, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to, you know, devise a plan so that we can conquer the world and we can win the gold medal? And he's like, don't worry about it. You know, we'll figure it out. The first day that they go for practice, which actually they had practice, those practices were here in La Jolla. Oh. The first day they go for practice, you know, he's all worried about all these talent, all these talented people, all these personalities coming together. And he's like, well, he's so worried he gets there to the bus and he's waiting outside the bus. You know, five minutes before they're all supposed to get there, Charles Barkley comes, Carl Malone comes, all these guys, you know, they start coming up to get into the bus and they're like, you know, where's Michael? Where's Michael? He goes up. Michael had been on the bus for an hour right. beforehand. Yeah. He was leading by example. He was setting the tone, even with all that talent around. He was like, this is business. We're going to win. Follow the leadership. Yeah. And like, it's one of the most powerful stories because you don't think about, you know, you don't think about somebody that is Michael Jordan, the jumper logo right. that, you know, actually he did. It didn't just happen. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't just happen for him. Right. You know, and he was the person that got kicked off of his JV basketball team, you know, and those are the things that, you know, when we have people come interview at the restaurant, every time that they do their first interview and I do that with them, I'm like, if you don't get called back for another interview, if you see that we have another job in the future, please come back yeah. because you'll have that experience and right. I'll know <laughs> right. that, you were willing to come back. Yeah. And some of the best people, they didn't get in the first time. Right. You know, like I didn't get into bishops the first time I applied. Yeah, I got into Monta Vista though right away. <laughs> so I mean they let you into Monta Vista? Fuck yeah. Speak well, speaking of that, I can't let it go, but uh Shane and Bishops, we we, we tore you guys up last week. Did you? Yeah, it was Did we bad. play? It was bad. Oh, I'm sure. It was real we're bad. Horrible. We're a small now, school, though. If I, <laughs> if it was my years. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that would have been a different story. That would have been a different that story. Been a different right. story right. For right. Sure. Yeah. right. I'm actually going to a, a Monte Vista game next week. Are That's you? Right, yeah. We should have gone to that Bishops game. That my fun. coach is getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, dude. Really? Yeah. Fancy. I like that. Yeah. So got to go support him. Coach Ed Carberry is the head football coach at Southwestern College right now and uh, doing an amazing job. I think they just went 10 and 1 or 10 and. I mean, they're fantastic. Got coach of the year really? for junior college. Yeah, that's impressive. He's really, really good. So, right. got Hall of Fame, Monte Vista. So, Nicole, let's talk about the uh, the bar stool people because I really like that. Oh, oh, the bar stool people yeah. in England. In because, England, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm the biggest Anglophile in the world, right? I probably in a few like former life was. I'm sure I was royalty. I just, <laughs> I just know it. I mean, I'm not even going to pretend like I just even lived there. I mean, let's just go for the crown as right. far as I'm concerned, I right? Like it. 
So um, I have I um, I'm all things England, and um, so I've spent a lot of time there. I have family there, and one of the things you find about the English, and um, this might not necessarily just be about the English, but one of but the pub culture, let's say. The well, pub- I found it fascinating because it's Spring Valley. I mean, every village. What we say is every village is the same. Yeah. There's great people in every village. And there's fucking idiots in every village. Sure, 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 sure. So, but like that pub mentality. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So the pub mentality basically is this, right? So I come in every day. I have my pint. I've, you know, done a, you know, a full day of work. I have my pint. And more than likely, I'm going to find, I'm going to see the same people every single day, right? Because that just becomes part of our culture to do that. So two conversations are going to take place. Either the first conversation is, it's still raining because it's England, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and then they're going to talk about the the football, the real football, not yep. the not right. the one you throw, but the one you exactly. kick. Um, or you're going to be talking about probably their kids who are off on their gap year and they're traveling the world. And so, I, what I find about the English people, the pub culture, is that there's 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 either the, they get stuck on their bar stool, or they're the people who bolt and they kind of never come back. It's this really interesting sort of culture. My brother-in-law is, is, is a bolter. So he's from England, left 25 years ago, and has no interest in going back. You know, I mean, visits, but doesn't yeah. want to go back to live or right. anything. And I find that even here in the English pubs, you know, yes. again, pub culture, right? And um, it's, these are the people who just kind of talk about life. And then there's the people who actually live life. Um, and so I just think it's really interesting how some people just really get stuck. They don't sure. know how to get off the bar stool. Well, it's, it's so easy to, to find the negative, you yeah. know, the grass is always greener, right. you know, it's kind of that, you know, where do you find the people that inspire you? Where yeah. do you find the people that are pushing the limit? The yeah. ones that are willing to be uncomfortable, right? Because I mean, you as a speaker, also as a teacher, how many times do you tell people to make that call to action mm-hmm. to say, if you want to learn more, email me, yeah. if you want, you yeah. know, like something touched you during this presentation, right. do something yep. and I will respond. Right. And I mean, what, what are the numbers? I mean, you oh, know, you'll, you'll go talk to 500 yeah. people and you'd be lucky if five people absolutely. actually took that call to action. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But everyone's there and they're engaged and they're right. like, Oh, Nicole, like, here's my card. Like, you know, well, and, and you yeah. tell them just do this. Well, yeah, we're, we are also in that culture of like, I just want the magic pill yes sure. right so if i attend that session yes and she's speaking or i listen to this one podcast yes then therefore, therefore my life tomorrow i can, op- I can open be, up a barbecue yeah, restaurant be, yeah exactly yeah. no that's not you know you're that's probably not the best path sure so you you take all the information you listen to the podcast you listen to the speaker you listen to all that but then you got to do something about it yes right I mean, you didn't just sit around and say we should have a podcast, no. right? You actually made a podcast, which yeah. is which is like that piece that find people missing. I am a crisis interventionist with the San Diego Police Department, so in a volunteer thing that I do, right? So we're super lucky in San Diego because um, twenty plus years ago, SDPD um, it started this program called Crisis Intervention. We're all volunteers, and there is a crisis interventionist on call 24-7, 365 days of the year. And so we get called out to a scene when an officer feels like a family could benefit from our services, our oh, resources, wow. that's cool. all that kind of stuff. So nine times out of 10, we're at a death scene. So right? That's got to be hard. Yeah, it is hard. It is hard, but it's also an incredible privilege to be with people in their most vulnerable moments. Sure, sure. Oh, so that's the way that I look at it. And people get really caught up in like, but you saw a dead body. I mean, I've right. now seen a lot of dead bodies. Yeah. I'll be, be completely honest with you. Right. But the reality is, there's nothing I can do about the dead body. But it might, but I can it help. might actually make you appreciate life more. Oh, it absolutely you know? does. It absolutely does. And it does. depends on your perspective going into that. And yes. that's obviously why you're doing things right. like this. And so my point in telling you this is that so often I go into a home, you know, because I'm, I'm literally seeing how these people have lived mm-hmm. their lives. I go into this home and I realize that these people are so stuck in their life. And they, they can't dream bigger than I hope my, you know, next disability check comes because I'll be able to make men's meet. And like, I feel like the, it's a little bit, the more depressing piece for me is not the fact that somebody died. It's that everybody around them is not living. Yes. Couldn't be said better. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it, it that's that's the that's, part to me that's so shocking. Yes. It's just that I'm like all and a lot of times it's that person who died who wasn't living. Yes. You know? Um and it's just it's so sad how small the world is for yes. them. 
You know, if nobody ever leaves Spring Valley, they don't know what, That's, you know, if they don't leave the village. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I mean, for me, like going to college and I went to Kansas, Kansas State, okay. it was such a culture shock, but there was never a period in my life that I grew more yeah. than going out to Kansas, Absolutely. learning more about myself. Yes. Absolutely. I've talked about it on the podcast before. I, I was done. I, I was coming home. I quit. Like, you know, my freshman year, I was I'm coming home, mom, and she's like, you're not. You yeah. Gotta, you got to stay out there. Yeah. And best decision I ever made. Absolutely. I grew. I understood, you know, the different cultures. I got into more hunting and fishing. Now I have 40 acres out in Alaska, the cabin. I go moose hunting every year. And, yeah. And I do stuff that I would never have done. Right. If I didn't experience that culture. And, Absolutely. And, and, um, I mean, just, you know, learning. I, we're huge proponents of education. So yeah. just understanding that the, there's so much different. I mean, I'm so privileged and to see some of the things out in Kansas, you're like, man, like, I'm, I'm tripping about the wrong things. Yeah, you know, this absolutely. Is, uh, absolutely. There's, there's so much more, and we can do so much more. And that's why right. Sean and I try to do as much as we can, because yeah. not everyone's as fortunate. Absolutely and, not, and no. To go see those right. things, and sometimes it's uncomfortable, you know, yeah. but you have yeah. to go see those things to grow and, and understand. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. one of the best things about that is the people that are willing to, to learn mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter where you are and you know i i'm very lucky and fortunate that my grandfather raised me and he was born on a village in bulgaria yeah. and the only reason he left that village is because he learned how to read right and he learned how to read and he gave him this thirst for knowledge and right you know it was a teacher who taught him that if he read if he would read and learn more then he could change different things and he would read books fiction nonfiction. But it helped him grow to become a medical doctor to leave yeah. Bulgaria. Right. And like when I when I go back to Bulgaria to his village and realize that all those people are all the pub people that yeah. haven't left right. and that sit there and they talk to all the other friends. Well, it's because of this or you know. Yeah. And trust me, once he was leaving, they were probably talking shit about him. Right. You know, like right. oh, who does he think he is? He's going right. to fail. All this other stuff. But it's he had that one track set and he was going to, no matter what, he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. Whether he failed, which he didn't get into medical school in, in Bulgaria. Yeah. And he was the smartest kid. He skipped a grade in his class. He right. didn't get into medical school, but he's like, fuck it. I'm going to apply to Germany. I yeah. don't know German, right? but I'm going to have somebody, I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to ask somebody to yeah. write my application in German so that I can get into school, even though I don't know a word of German. Yeah. So I'm going to learn German yeah. while I'm learning um, yeah, medicine. medicine. Yeah. And you know, when you see stuff like that, you realize that it doesn't matter how you learn, yeah. whether it's by reading, whether it's by listening to a book on tape, mm -hmm. whatever it is, you can always change that situation. Absolutely. And, that, and that's why I think that what I love about podcasting, too, and I am super fired up to just talk to you guys about it because um, not only to be on your podcast, but just to talk about it. Well, I, I want feel, you to have your own podcast. Oh, no, a thousand percent. Because, like, yeah. the context that you have and yeah. the people that you have in the industry, I mean, yeah. you know, people benefit and it's – the power is that you know you go you go to a conference and you can talk to five hundred people, but you can put it on a podcast. It'll be there forever, right? Exactly. You know, it'll be yeah. accessible all over the world, right. so people can benefit from right. somebody that was willing to you know write a book, tell yeah. their story, and go dive into you know. I mean, you reveal everything, yeah. you know, yeah. but you reveal everything to be stronger. So right. it's, so you're not bullshitting, right? Exactly, you know? exactly. So you being my you know, student yes. as when we first met, like you read my book, what, like, what's your big takeaway from I, it? The, the best takeaway I have is that I can see that you are, there's multiple times because you talk about the struggle as a woman, mm -hmm. you know, and all the things that men did to you in your mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. that prevented you from, you know, really finding your voice, yeah. you know, except it resonated with me with a, people that are, want to open their own business. Yeah. You know, and I found that so powerful because whether it's, um, and all those figures, no matter who they are, whether, mm -hmm. because it could be a boyfriend, it could be somebody that you think is going to be your knight in shining armor. Right. It could be your mom. Right. It could be your dad. It could be my grandfather. You know, right. my grandfather wanted me to be a, in, a medical doctor just yeah. like him, right. except I wasn't. Like, that's right. just not what drove me. But he cared to, you know, be my backbone, be yeah. the person that inspired me to go and read more. And right. no matter what you do in life, you have to find mentors. Mm -hmm. You have to reach out to mentors. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like what you said, it's not a magic pill. Right. You know, you even talk about Gary Vaynerchuk in your book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, I love his message because it's like, you got to fucking work. Yeah. 
Like right. there's, there's no there, overnight like, success. Like, like, right. Even the talented fucking people, yeah. like you have to fucking work. Well, yeah. and you got to work every single day. Instant Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone says instant gratification. They want it now. They want they wanted it yesterday. Like you said, yeah. that magic pill. You know, right. I want to lose weight. We'll just take this pill and it's all good. Like, right. no, you got to fucking work hard. You got to do things. Yeah. I've I'm working out again. We've lost like 25 pounds in the last Amazing. three weeks. Nice. And it's like, Good. how did I do it? Is that a challenge? It's it's a, yeah. it's not a fucking, <laughs> right. it's not a pill. Right. It's I've been going to the it's gym. A, it's simple math. <laughs> I've been going to the gym, working out, yeah. and eating more. calories yeah. in, like, calories I mean, out. It's, it's not like some <laughs> some magic formula, you know. It's uh, so yeah, that instant gratification that people want. And with Gary, I mean, I just love what he always talks about. It's like, don't worry about your shortcomings. Fuck it. Like just capitalize Embrace on what you do right. well. Yeah. Right. Figure out exactly. what you do best and capitalize on it and fucking run with it. And yeah. run with it. And yeah. don't wait. Like, cause everyone wants to wait. Everybody wants to wait. You know, and it's yeah. like there's when no, I talk, I talk no to friends time. that I want them to podcast. I'm like, what the fuck are you waiting for? Yeah. Stop exactly. waiting. Get the equipment. Like me, I was yeah. Get the equipment. Get your logo. He didn't let like, me. You know, you like, let me wait. Google whatever the fuck you need, and yeah. it's all there. Right. Like, or ask us, or ask somebody else right. that's doing it, because right. you can do it, and it, you'll benefit from it. Right. You know. Well, and I think people always get caught up in the like, you know, it, I'm waiting for great, and yes. good is good enough. Oh yeah. Right. So you could be, you know, completely trying to polish this up to the nth degree, you know, and not publish yes. your podcast until you're like, oh, that's perfect. Every word was perfect, yes. and. Right. But the reality is, is that you're going to be, I mean, the time that you've wasted, yes. instead put it out there three years from now, you can look back and be like, oh my God, we, we were, were fucking terrible. mess, <laughs> right. right? Look at that. And look how far yeah. we've come. Yeah. Like, how fun is that to yeah. be like, that's exactly. where I was. And now this is where we are. I mean, that's what's so cool. And so that's the big thing is I always try to tell people who are going into business, you know, they get caught up like, well, I don't have my website yet. Yes. I don't have my business cards. And it's like, just put something fucking on the screen yes. and then Absolutely. figure it out. You know, but don't keep waiting until you're perfect because yeah. that day's never going to come. At the we, podcast movement, they talked about, you know, just not not trying to be perfect. And everyone's like, how do I get more followers or how yeah. do I get more listeners? And their message was embrace having very few followers. Have, right. That embrace the process. Right. Fucking listening. Like that. Yes. Yeah. It, it might only be 30 people, but those fucking 30 people are engaged. Yeah. Embrace it. Love right. it. It'll, the followers will come. If, right. you, if you put out good content, they're going to come. Exactly. So embrace the process, understand it, and just run with it. And like right. you said, in three years, you look back and like, oh, my God, we have 10,000 people listening. You know? yeah. It, yeah. yeah. But also, selfishly, th even if nobody listened, think of the, the knowledge that you two are gaining but, just in terms of your own business. Yeah, like, let's totally. just be selfish for a minute. Sure. If we're selfishly look at it, I mean, yeah. our events are directly <laughs> benefiting because we're spending time with people that we want people. to participate yeah, in. Our, right. And then they learn who we are. Yeah. And they knew that it's not about Cali Comfort. Right. It's not about right. Sean. It's not about Derek. Right. It's about how do we raise money for organizations and training because yeah. that's a charity that we really care about okay. and we care about giving yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's so important. Tell me about the big ask, about authentic intention. Ah, because I think ask. like, you know, for you to get to the London, uh, that's such a powerful story because yeah. I have stories of my own where I reached out and like yeah. if you don't do that, right. you're never going to get anything. No, ever. So um, the London Olympics happened in... Um, well, they were they were assigned. So London won the Olympics in 2007. So they knew that in 2012 they were hosting the games. And um, again, being a huge Anglophile, I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, Dude, first you're all in. I was, yeah, a thousand percent. <laughs> I was going. like, yeah, yeah, I was like, who do I need to marry? <laughs> right. Like, right. I'm gonna have to call on the royal roots again from a previous lifetime, right? So I. Um, but I quickly realized that apparently, you know, that wasn't the path, right? So I. Um, I'm just a big believer in you have to ask for help, right? And if, because if I don't know what you need, That's I don't know hard. how to help you. That's hard yes. though. Right? It's so I don't hard. know. It is hard. It is hard, but it, it shouldn't be as hard. No, it shouldn't. It, should, right. it shouldn't, but especially for, you know, like for someone like yourself, for someone like us, like we're, we're the last people to ever ask for right. fucking help. Yeah. Right. And like right. we're the people that need that information the most. Right. Exactly. Because you don't realize what you know until you did what you did. Yeah. So, um, so I was inspired to, like, I was like, somebody knows somebody who can get me to work at the Olympics, right? I mean, it was going to fulfill two dreams, right? The event side of me just working at the Olympics, and then the fact that my first Olympics could be in London is like, that's insane. So I sat down one Sunday night in November of 2011, and I just drafted an email to basically anybody who would recognize my name in their inbox, okay? And my email, and I printed in my book, you can, like, 
plagiarized and used that actual email because it worked. And basically <laughs> it was this, like, here's my dream. I want to let you know what my dream is. Um, and I know somebody who knows somebody who can make that happen. So I'm welcoming any introductions that you have. Um, please help me to get there. And um, whatever I can do to you, just let, you know, for you, let me know to you. That's cute. <laughs> That's a whole different book. Yeah, yeah. Saying, well, what's your next book going to be called? Um, so, okay, now I'm blushing. Um, but I knew somebody could help me. So that went out to about, a, um, a, a couple, you know, over 100 people. And I was blown away because I had like 30 people who responded. That's a huge open rate. Huge, yeah. right? Huge <laughs> That's open rate. That's a huge open rate. <clears throat> and so. That's um, not even an open rate. That's actually a response rate, which is even better. <laughs> That's a call to action right? rate. Right, exactly. And it's not that I had 30 people who said, well, here's the exact <coughs> number you need to call, sure. right? Here's the Olympics. But it was, I have a cousin that lives in London who works for a company, let me introduce you. Or our office has an office in the UK. Let me see if we can make a connection. So I had all this positivity and this swell around me, which was really beautiful. But more importantly, it was about accountability. Because the yes. next time, like if I was to see, you know, if I if you guys got that email and then I saw you a right. week or two later. How, how's that going? How's that going? <laughs> right? So you couldn't be the girl who's like, I'm going to send this email and then like yeah. kick it and wait right. for people to come to me. So that was an important piece too because – it's the accountability piece because you don't want to be like, oh, I sent that email and then I haven't done anything. That's but late. you, those are your, those become your closest friends. I mean, yeah. we have people that you know we've listened to in this podcast and they've been like, oh, I plan on opening a barbecue restaurant. Yeah. Guess who's calling them out? Yeah, I'm calling them out because right. they've told me what their intention is, a and thousand I'm, percent, and I want them to succeed. Yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. You and have people in your circle mm -hmm. that want you to succeed, and you don't realize that. Until you take that step and make that make that ask. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So, yeah. So, luckily, the right person. Um, I did get introduced to the right person, and um, then I was in London for almost eight weeks working the London Games, and I got the best job in the entire world. Like, I would have swept floors. I didn't care, but they because that's of my, important. Yeah, but that's important because yeah. like we live in a world where people they want. I want to work and I want to be hand holding, you yeah. know, the athlete. Right. You know, it's like, well, but you, you she's just embracing get in the your process. Fucking, yeah. You get your yeah. fucking foot in the door. Right. Yeah. No exactly. matter what. Exactly. Don't exactly. worry. That will come. Yeah. Like, right. if you are who you are and yeah. you want to do what you want to do. Right. All you have to do is make that ask. Exactly. And exactly. get your foot in the door. Right. Sweep and it's, the floor if you have right. to. Right. Sweep the floor. And so, um, thankfully, I uh, didn't have to sweep the floor. Um, I was able to work with the CEO of Visa Europe. Visa is the oh, sponsors, uh, the major sponsor of the games. Um, and so they were like, you're going to be a sign. I heard they're a pretty big company. Yeah, just this little, you just this startup, a yeah, startup. startup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They like we all, we the, probably all have them in our pocket. Yeah, they kind of just use the Olympics as like a launching pad yeah. for their brand. Wow, um, that is awesome. You no, know, so it was really amazing. And then get your foot in the door, right? So yes. that then led, of course, to... Sochi, Rio, FIFA, Super Bowls. Like it's, so are you doing uh, LA? Uh, that's a little far out for us. It's a little that's too a little, far, out. far out. Okay, but I'll tell you, like, I'm super stoked for LA. I think it's great. But from somebody who travels the world, yes. it's not that exciting to me to yeah. be like LA. I'm here in LA. You yeah. know, I mean, that for me is like I don't have to use my passport. So, yeah. um, But still, it's great for LA and it, it, it'll be great to see what they, what they produce. It will be yeah. very, very interesting, especially seeing, mm -hmm. I mean, you saw firsthand. I mean, mm -hmm. we see what the media puts out and, right. you know, all the things that are supposed to be going wrong in Brazil and all mm -hmm. the things that, you know, from an athlete side that are going wrong yeah. in Sochi, right. you know, and then you, the pitch is always for sports entertainment. It's like how much the host country is going to benefit. Yeah. But you see how much the host country has to put out. It's, I don't know why a city wants to host the Olympics, yeah. to be honest with you. It seems like it's like, you know, the shiny toy and like, yeah. oh, we're an Olympic city. Don't get me wrong. There's, that's important. There's prestige. People don't understand that you have to build an entire city within a city. You have to build infrastructure. I mean, you're built, you're Absolutely. building multiple stadiums. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is why when, when San Diego a few years back was like, we need to throw our hat in the ring. Yeah. And I was like, he, we he. can't build a park. <laughs> yeah. I was let's like, get serious. Um, okay, let's just let's start with like, we Diego. have to actually have trolleys that go places yes. right. because you don't drive to the Olympics. Yes. Like that's not a thing. Nobody gets in their car and drives to the Olympics and is like, Hey, it's $20 to park at, you know, yeah. Qualcomm or whatever it's yeah. called now. Right. Um, that's not a thing. Like cities, you have to be so wildly prepared and, yeah. and it, it changes the dynamics of a city 
immensely. For sure. Yeah. Like for forever. Forever. Yeah. Forever. Well, and that, but then you look at what's happening in Rio. Now you go back and you're like, oh, they're like little skeletons. The, yes. All the venues and it's just heartbreaking, you know. Yeah, but maybe it'd be it'd probably be good for us though in San Diego to get something to that like, kickstart. Yeah. Us to you know get our foot out or you know just just do something. We're do so something. fucked up right now. It's yeah. It's hopefully, pretty sad. yeah. If, if we ever. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I just this week I went to Anaheim uh-huh. for a U.S. Foods, you know, trade show. Right. That was the second time this year that I went to Anaheim for a convention, and it's like, what the fuck is happening, San Diego? Yeah. Why can't you get your shit together? Right. And you're like, well, we have Comic Con. Like, well, we're not going to have Comic Con if we don't get our shit together. Exactly. You yeah. know, you know, in an, yeah. in event management, like, yeah. you have to have the facilities right. to get these big time events. Absolutely. Anaheim's, it's pretty, man. It's nice. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're investing. They're investing yeah. in the infrastructure. I mean, what are you now like a part of the, you know, visitor center for Anaheim? I yeah. mean, Apparently. listen, yeah. Apparently I mean, I have some I don't, loyalty. I don't want to be, but Fuck, have some damn. loyalty over here. No, we yeah. have to, we have to, I actually like it. I hate the fucking traffic though. No, it's a nightmare. Actually, San Diego traffic sucks now too. Yeah. You didn't even make it to that meeting. Dude, that was so bad. <laughs> Derek is not a fan of traffic. No, I, I don't I don't do well. I don't do well in traffic. No, we were heading to uh to go see um Craig Dato Del Mar and I couldn't do it. No. I was you going, couldn't even get there. And you couldn't get there on time. Yep. I had to drop my kids off at seven in the morning just to try to get out and then it was gonna take me an He's hour still, and yeah, forty five minutes. From to get east to, from East County to Del Mar. Del Mar, you couldn't even get there in oh, an hour man. and a half. Hour and stuck, half. Crazy. I was stuck on the 52 for like 40 minutes. Well, good thing you have a good podcast to listen to, yeah. right? Did you just like hit it, hit up the Behind the Smoke? or? Yeah. No, what? I actually hate listening to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, I listen to uh, Joe Rogan a lot. I, okay. I love love his uh, okay. his guests and his just the way he, he does everything. I'm a fan. Okay. Yeah, very successful. So let's talk about uh, teaching. teaching. Why? Why are you teaching? Uh, there are days when I have to <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I, it's a couple of reasons. First of all, I've had tremendous mentors in my life um, and not necessarily even mentors. I mean, Marley would be a mentor that I sought out. Yes. You know, I was like, she's mine. I, right. I want that. You know, yeah. I want that woman in my life. Um, but just throughout my career, when I had a job working for different companies, I would definitely say I had great mentors. So I feel like I was very blessed that people took the time to make me a better event planner, a better entrepreneur, you know, all of that stuff. So a big part of teaching for me is because I owe it to the universe. Um, and I feel like we have to be better as an industry because especially on the event in the event world, um, you know, everybody, there's no barrier to entry. Yes. Right. So, you know, you could just throw a website up and be like, I'm an event planner now. There's no real like formal requirements to do that. And so what we what we're finding is that there's a lot of hobbyists that do, you know, uh, events. And so I want to change that. I want I want people who want to be in the industry because it's their passion, because it's their life goal. Um, and I want them to be good at what they do. And I start the first class always the same way every single semester. Not so much at USD, but in my community college, my semester long class. And I say, my job is to help you to become a colleague of mine. And I don't want to work with an idiot. Yes. Right. Good. I, no, I, like, I like legitimately that. say Absolutely. that. And they're always like, ha ha. And I was like, no, I'm like, not no, kidding. I'm, I don't want to work because, with a fucking idiot. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. So my job is to make you a great colleague of mine. Yes. And, and, if, and if you become that, then I've done my job or contributed it to that. So that to me is really important. Um, I've been teaching long enough now that I've seen a shift in a generation, yeah. which is kind of like, I feel like now I'm really getting old. Um, <laughs> but I, it, we go back to like putting in the work. Yes. You know, I don't find my students put in the work like they should. And they really just want to know what do, exactly do I have to do to get an A? They've taken away creativity. They've taken away like inspiration or like, wow, this is a cool project. And I can really kind of dream well, about it. We've kind of done that direction. as a culture too, right? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. That sucks. But it really translates itself into, into teaching. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about marketing. Cause okay. I know you have a huge passion for marketing, especially mm-hmm. digital mar- mm-hmm. marketing and the power of Twitter, the power of LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, um, and how, especially how it relates to event planning. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what do you teach your students? You got to pick your lane. 
Yeah. You got to understand where your target market is, right? So if um, if you're if you're selling to you know baby boomers, you probably don't need to spend a ton of time on Snapchat. Yeah. Because mom and dad aren't on Snapchat yet. Yep. Um, so you got to figure out what where your lane is and and what. And how you're going to use social media? What's the purpose of it? Are you just going to post pretty pictures, or is there eventually going to be a call to action of you're trying to convert them? Right. So it's one thing to just be showing pictures of your barbecue, but yep. at some point you got to be like, hey, come in and taste the barbecue, yes. or here's something you can do to experience the barbecue. And so I feel like people are so again caught up that Instagram is like it has to be pretty, the pretty perfect pictures and. And again, just start putting stuff up. Your audience is going to come yeah. when it's supposed to come. When it's authentic. When it's authentic. And yeah. that's what people really love. If you if you look at, I mean, you know, people who do like live Instagram and all yes. that kind of stuff, most of the time they're not coming out of the hair salon. I mean, yeah. they're like, well, this is me at 6 a.m. This yeah. is how we roll. Like, it it's part look, of the journey. It's part of the journey. And like you're yeah. like being an entrepreneur, owning a business, like it's not fucking it it's not your stock price. You uh -uh. know, it's not like, oh, this is who we are. It's right. what happens to get to there. Right. You know, right. and like the more that people are willing to share, I feel like the more that they're willing to buy into you right. know, you're bullshit, yeah, <laughs> you know, because exactly. we're, we're all full of shit. You yeah. know, we're, we're telling our story the best that we know how, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. the more that you're willing to peel that onion back and mm -hmm. the, reveal those different layers, yeah. the more that they can find out who Nicole really is, right. you know, and like that it wasn't fucking flowers and daisies to yeah. get here, exactly. you know, like you had to deal with a lot of shit and you had to realize that like, you know, working for a law firm wasn't your, no. that, that wasn't meant for you. Nope. Exactly. You know? And the big, and, and also get out of your own way. Yeah. You know, stop telling it. We all have the tape in our heads. That's what I call it in the book is we all have the story of I'm not pretty enough. I'm not I don't weigh the right, you know, size. And, I, you know, I'm single at, you know, 44. And, you know, I mean, all that I can get. I mean, I could be depressed and fetal sure, here sure. in 30 seconds if you want me to be. Right. But at some point I have to get up off the floor yeah. and go, OK, yes, maybe those things are true. Mm -hmm. But now what? Right now. Now what? what? Now what? Exactly. Right. And so the biggest thing I think is people and the, the reason the book is called permission is just because people don't give themselves permission to say, I am entitled to that. Yes. Right. I'm in I, I, I deserve to be able to become an entrepreneur if that's what makes my heart sing. Yes. Right. But just because you've given yourself permission doesn't mean you don't have to put in the work. Absolutely. Right. You know, I don't sit around and go, well, I deserve, you know, I give myself permission to be a supermodel, yeah. you know, but yeah. I got to put in the work to, you know, to grow six inches and, you know, lose a hundred <laughs> pounds. So like that's, yeah. man, no, that, everyone's born a leader. I'm not, I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a, I really believe that. I think everyone's born a leader. Not everyone wants to work towards it. Yeah. And not everyone, you know, understands themselves enough to, to go do it. It's, um, no one likes to be told what to do, right? I mean, right. it's when you're two years old and stop I mean, my kids right now. Stop yelling every day. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's like my kids right now. It's like, Hey, you know, let's do this. Like, no, like no one wants to be told what to do. Right. So you want to. Do, uh, you know, have your own path, right. but no, one, not everyone wants to put the work in right. to create that path right. and trust themselves. Cause right. you always have these, like, you know, those things in your head that right. are saying oh, you're not good enough or this right. or that. You just have to get past it, own yeah. it and say, Hey, yeah. no, I am, I, I owe it to myself to do that. Right. Well, and your tribe is a big piece of it too. Sure. You got to know who your tribe is, yeah. right? You got to know who the people are yes. around you who, even if you do come out of a difficult childhood or, you know, relationship or whatever, you don't have to be stuck there just because that's how your story started. Well, you, you talk about the yeah. naysayers. Yeah, absolutely. It's mean, one of my favorite songs is 311, Fuck the Naysayers. Yeah, Because they exactly. don't mean a thing. Right. I mean, it's like, you, but you mm -hmm. have to approach it that way. You know, yeah. it's like we had Ernie Hahn on and we were talking oh, about, amazing. you know, the uh, the man in the arena. Yeah. And it's not the critic who counts, you know. And yeah. That, that goes, you have to get out of the bullshit. Right. You know, you have to remove yourself from that. Right. You have to do what's, you know, do what makes you happy. Right. What, and what is that? Right. You know, and if you don't, if you're not willing to find that, if you're not willing to be uncomfortable, yeah. you're yeah. probably going to be miserable. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, I look going back to Gary Vee. I mean, I mean, what does he say a thousand times when somebody walks up to him, like after a presentation or whatever, and they're like, and I want to do this. And I, and he's like, okay, what are you doing about that? Yeah. You know, and call them out. You call fucking call, you yeah, call them exactly. right there yeah. on yeah. like, yeah, this is your intention. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. have you done? To get there. Yeah. Like, yes, you came to me after the presentation, but, right. you know, I'm right. not like, I'm here. Yeah. Like, you know, right. you can read my books, you know, you can listen to my podcast, you can right. follow me on YouTube, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what are you doing to right. get to that goal? Right. You know, it's yeah. like what you said, and we talk about here is like, if you're want to get in the barbecue business, like, 
go to a farmer's market, Mm -hmm. go find out somebody that has a booth and ask them if you can cook some barbecue and sell it at the farmer's market. If you think you want to compete, guess what? We created the Spring Valley Tailgate and Barbecue Festival for amateurs to see if, you know, if you're food is any good if it's right. you know you have right. you cook in the backyard and everyone tells you everything's right. you know like oh you make the best fucking carne asada in the world yeah, yeah. that's the best i've ever had right. so like, okay. okay it's the best Let's you've ever it. had then come out and do it yeah. and what's the worst that's going to happen right exactly the worst that happened is that you spend two hundred dollars you come and get you know prime meat donated by valley farm you yeah. go out there and you get last place right you know, right. you get last place. Right. But guess what? If you go out there and you ask questions from Gene Goikachea or you ask yeah. other teams that have competed and they give you advice, guess what? You might have a fucking amazing time yeah. and realize that, hey, maybe I can right. do something with this. Maybe right. you sell more than any of the other booths. And you're mm-hmm. like, well, hey, maybe I can start a catering company. Yeah. Then maybe I don't have to be fucking miserable, right. you know, nine to five every single day yeah. and wondering why am I doing what I hate to do. Right. Exactly. You know, I mean, and even last place is still a lot further ahead than the hundred si- million fuckers who never got off the couch. Well, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely. Like, so, they want to walk well, around like, oh, I could have made barbecue better than that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Come yeah. Because, yeah. Put up or shut up. Right. Yeah, like, put here up we or go. shut up. It's yeah. like it's like, oh, well, I'm not ready this year. It's like it's an amateur contest. There's yeah. honestly, there's nothing to lose. We're right. raising money for organizations and training to yeah. help under you know at risk youth. Yeah. Amazing. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to help us raise more money for that you yeah. know that organization, right. and you might have a great time. Right. Right. You know, you right. might have a great. T- <laughs> yeah, it's I totally know. up to Amazing. you, right? Yeah. Permission granted. Permission granted. Right. A thousand percent. So what's uh, what's the next uh, project? Oh, the next project. Um, so talking about podcasts. So my idea for a podcast. Yes. I'll throw it out I there and it. let me know what you what you boys think and girl in the room. Thank you for being here, bringing the Layla's. The, in, she's Layla, she's in yeah. events. Oh, so, good. Yeah, yeah. I she's... appreciate the other estrogen in the room. Right? <laughs> nice to, I, it's like junior high. It's like the girls on one side, the boys on the other. Um, okay, so here's my thing. I um, I'm a big proponent of sitting around a table. Yes. Um, some of the best times of my life um, have happened at my parents' dining room table. They've happened around a boardroom. Yes. And so recently, I became inspired by this whole notion of these moments around the table. And I think that there is room for people to have conversations around the table and celebrate the, you know, the, the best of times, the worst of times, you know, the, the laughter, the storytelling, the inspiration, the crying, the whatever it needs to be around the table. So, so I, I, I started this new thing called Moments Around the Table. And my idea for our podcast is to get really just interesting people that right. not, not necessarily are huge names. I mean, eventually we'd get there, right. but... I just want to talk to real people having real conversations, real struggles, real successes, real, you know, real, real around, I think that's around the, the best table. part about the podcast yeah. is that, you know, one of the things we talk about is we're not because it's our pod because we're self producing yeah. our own yeah. podcast. Right. We're not going out and soliciting sponsors just to keep the show going. Yeah. You know, we're right. paying for it out of our own pocket because right. we want it to be authentic. Yeah. And there's you no know, agendas. There's no, no agendas. agendas. Yeah. Whatever we want. Right talk be transparent about whatever we want to be right. transparent about i don't have anyone tell me what i can and can't say right and i, think and that's I like only, how only you way. both have approached it because like sean's got like 47 pages of notes yeah, and, and, <laughs> and like my, my, you my, over my, here my. is like trying to crack open another can of coffee like right. you're like you know I mean, let I'll, me ask her i'm a question that asshole about in the back <laughs> right i'm the asshole you in the know? back of the room but, but it's like it's, it's a larry king approach yeah larry king I mean, did zero he did zero background work he wanted to know as little as possible about his guests so he could actually Go That's, at it from a, a viewer's standpoint. Well, then I'm, I'm succeeding. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, well, one of the best some, interviewers of all time. Well, <laughs> yeah. Just good. get you some suspenders, and then you'll be really Larry King. Yeah, there That's we go. The trademark, I, right? I would like to see that. Yeah, I'll do it. don't kid yourself. <laughs> Next week, it's on. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's my goal. So, what are you doing for to get to? Yeah. That what goal? am I getting? Okay. So, um, I have actually been researching. Yes. Um, what equipment do I need? There so you I, go. That's why I'm going to be taking copious notes when we finish, and I'll tell you. Um, that I have reached out to, because uh, I was kind of struggling with like, where am I going to host it? Yeah. Like, I don't have a great, you know, uh, grocery store that I can host it in. So <laughs> maybe I can rent space here. I don't sure, know. Okay. Absolutely. Moments around the table right here. Yeah. Um, but all about, you know, strategic partnerships yes. and whatever. So I have reached out to a, um, a professional organization. We'll just leave it at that for now um, that I'm a member of and said, I want to host a, I don't have any more to do it. So let me, can I do it there? I don't want to rent space to do it. Right. No, I'll bring no. all the equipment. Yeah, absolutely. 
And the best part is, is that like their whole membership becomes like instant guests. And then the fact that we're doing it there, they obviously get, you know, great things. So great uh, credit for that. So, um, so that's where, that's a discussion being held. Awesome. Um, So I I think we have a, hopefully we have a home for it and we just have to figure out all this equipment. And and I'm going to take Corey with me because he's going to become my producer of the show. Because so far he's been easy to work with. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's it. So I, I've already started like, you know, my wish list of, you know, people that I want to eventually have and then figuring out how we're going to, you know, and zigzag I mean, the, to get there. The best part about it is like, once you start with the platform, you yeah. realize that you can have anybody on you want. A- absolutely. You just need to ask. Yeah. Right. 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 right What's right, the worst right. they say is they right. don't say anything and you yeah. just have to keep emailing them or yeah. find them at a, you know, and then yeah. figure out a time to get them on and in. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And the platform allows us, I mean, we we're mobile, we can go mm-hmm. and literally, you know, we went to Scott Kaplan up to mighty 1090 and we did a podcast right in the middle of the studio. Awesome. Del Mar. You know, we did yeah. it on Del Mar on yeah. the main stage. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. But and if we can be of any help in all joking aside, if you do need to use this oh, thanks. for oh, yeah. the oh, first few times it. until you. you're sweet. more than welcome to yeah, that, come here. You. I only charge a little bit, so <laughs> <laughs> no, no, big, no big deal. Right. No big deal. <laughs> so what's next uh, after the podcast? Are we doing another book? Um, you know, there's, it's noodling. It's noodling. Um, one of the things I'm really fascinated in, I, I kind of um, have a loose title called How Big Is Your Bold? And I really want to look at <laughs> how big is your bulge? Yeah. Dude, I was like, oh, Not bulge. Fuck. I didn't say bulge. I didn't say how big is your bulge. I said how big is your bulge. Oh, man. <laughs> um, but I'm fascinated. Um, I, too, was a sociology major, so yeah, we share that in goes. common. We love people. Yeah, we love uh, people. Yeah. And I love Christ. I love human... analyzed all over yeah, the place, right. You've wow. always been analyzed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's serious. Um, I, I think it's really amazing when people have those bold moments. You know, the, the sending the email to get yourself to the Olympics or you know, starting a business or yeah. getting out of a relationship that you shouldn't be in or whatever, sure. whatever your bold is. And it, it, it's not for me to judge if that was your, your bold moment or not. It's whatever felt really bold to you. Um, so I, I'm fascinated with people's bold. Um, and so I, I'm kind of toying with that, the title, you know, working title of how big is your bold. That's going to require me to not tell my own stories, but tell other people's stories. Yeah. Um, so that's going to take a little more work and I'm going to have to figure out if I, if I like telling other people's stories or I just, you know, want the talking stick myself. So well, I, mean, um, I think podcast, I mean, Tim Ferriss, uh-huh. his podcast is literally tools of the Titans. That book came yeah. because of his podcast. Yeah. He developed all those relationships with all of his podcast guests, you know, and learned out who they were right. and told their story. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I, the other and the other thing is, is I think there's, you know, I use how big is your bold, but I think it, it also talks about defining moments in you yeah. know, my book. And, and I think that there's always a moment when something changes in your life. You know, for me, it was learning that the man I was in a relationship with had impregnated another woman. So that's cute. Yeah. Um, and, but that was a super defining moment because I well, remember that, that and you wrote about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can't overlook that you actually wrote about that and yeah. that leads off the book. Right. You know, yeah, like exactly that's you right. being vulnerable right. and putting yourself out there. Right. Which I appreciate yeah. as Thank a reader, you, you, you know, you. and I know anybody that does read the book, Yeah. you know, they will appreciate because it's, that's your story. You're yeah. not, you're not bullshitting them. Well, right. I mean, what am I going to do? Pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. You know, I it mean, shaped, that's, it shaped who you are. It absolutely did. It does. And, and I remember standing, I mean, I write in the book, I was standing in his kitchen. I was cutting mushrooms for the salad we were about to have. I don't know why he decided to tell me that when I had a knife in my hand, it's super <laughs> not, that super not nice, yeah. Pretty but bold. yeah, pretty and, yeah, that is pretty bold. <laughs> right? Bold. Yeah. right. Um, and I just remember more than, being shocked i think at what he was telling me i was shocked that that was the moment in my life where things were going to be different and i physically felt that i yeah. knew that that was my life was different at yeah. that very moment like i i became a grown up even at 34 i was like oh this is what grown up hood is yeah. i get this now like this is this is grown up stuff we're talking about babies we're talking about yeah. cheating we're talking yes. you know um and so for me, that was really a defining moment. I, I like defining moments for people. I want to know 
because a lot of times they're not positive. No. But it totally can change the tra trajectory of your life. And I think for me, that's super fascinating. Isn't it? I mean, so it's, fascinating. I mean, those those are the times. It's your grandpa. It's my grandfather when he doing, gets that when yeah. he gets that letter from mm -hmm. you know he he knows that he's the smartest kid in yeah. Bulgaria and right. he knows that he absolutely should be going to school medical school. He's worked his whole life to get out of the village. Yeah. You know, he left his village to go to a smaller city where he could go to high school so that he could get into medical school. Yeah. And they say, no, you can't get in. Right. And he's like, fuck that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I will get in. Right. You know, and I will get in somewhere else. Yeah. And like that defining moment exactly is mm -hmm. that. It's, well, okay, I know I can get in somewhere else, but what am I going to do about it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, now exactly. I need to know someone that knows German, <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> yeah. which is, you know, yeah. that's another bridge that you have to get to. Right. So know. in the end, with the knife, I just cut off his cock. Bob was like, never going to have another baby, are we? Right. Bob it. <laughs> no, Actually, do, you even know, do you guys even know who Bob it is, Corey? Oh, bless your conscience. No? Oh, my oh, God. Really? You don't know who Lorena Bobbitt is? Come on. Wow. We're aging over here. Dick Seriously? In, dick oh. in a bag? Dick in a, uh, dick in a box? Uh, <laughs> dick in a Ziploc? Ziploc bag? Yeah, like, then he went and tried to do porn, didn't he? Oh, right, because they sewed it back on, yeah, didn't they? they? Back on. Really? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Didn't she <laughs> have what, else, it little, what else would you do? Well, she put it in a bag? Or yeah, she, she, put yeah, she put it in the bag. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And she threw it out the window. Yeah. Oh, right? Out of the car window. Yeah. That's right. See? Stories. So you you're guys, just getting you, parts of it, but I bet kids, you yeah. understand. What, yeah. Are you guys taking notes? Are you Make taking sure you notes? take notes. That's your this. defining moment yeah. right yeah, it's, there. It's Listen. weird. They're, they're redoing OJ and they're redoing the Menendez on TV, but they didn't do Bobbitt. Like, yeah. come on, Bobbitt says people need to know about Bobbitt. Yeah. yeah. That's legendary. Very legendary. Right? That's right. That's where. So, yeah. how, uh, how can people get in touch with you? Um, through my dating apps. Through no, your dating just, apps? Just, <laughs> Starting a new dating yeah, app? No, no, no. Um, so the Henley Company, so it's um, H-E-N-L-E-Y, the Henley Company, um, is my website. So that's my professional side. You can always get me on social media at, at Henley Co, H-E-N-L-E-Y-C-O, um, or Nicole at the Henley Company dot com. Yep. I'm not so big, you can't even email me. Yeah. Nice. I mean, you, I still like the little people. Well, cool. the yeah. The crazy thing is I emailed Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. He emailed me back. He did? So no matter how big you think you are, if you don't if you don't make that, yeah. you know, it's he like. He responded to me one time on go. a, um, I think it was a tweet. He did a live, like, a, you know, he did a video response mm -hmm. back to me. I was asking him about something. It, like, it's like the great. This fucking guy has time to right? respond to my email. Like, and yeah. You, and He's the kind of person that you know. He doesn't have an assistant going through his inbox. Uh -uh. Like that's fucking him. God, right. I feel like, <laughs> it's fucking I feel him. like shit. Yeah, you <laughs> miss her. It takes six weeks to write an email. Yeah, You're I know. Screwed. Fuck. I'm fucked. <laughs> I gotta get. That. Yeah, I gotta fucking figure it out. You need to figure my life or something. <laughs> this might be my pivoting point. You really? Bold. This is my your bold. How low. big is your bulge? Yeah, this, this is mine. It's okay. Yeah. This is how big is your bulge? Yeah, how big is your bulge? Yeah. Or your bulge? Whatever. Yeah, both pretty small. <laughs> So um, the show notes, every single show we do, we have show notes. So all the things that we talked about, um, all the ways to get a hold of Nicole, they're on there. Uh, you can always tweet at Derek and never get a response, or you can tweet. Dude, no, at, I'm fucking. Or you I'm, can tweet I'm, I'm at changing, me. Changing. I'm changing. I'm changing. Today's the day. Today's the day. Your are we, tweet are we, I will respond. Are we making a Bitmoji for you today? No. No. <laughs> Leave me alone. No Snapchat. I'm, I'm just yet. getting back to <laughs> emails, Twitter. I'll respond. What about LinkedIn? Because LinkedIn, LinkedIn's doing a great job, actually. Yeah, you they've been, love they've, it. They've been you're investing heavily mm -hmm. on, on uh, Microsoft. They, they're putting a lot of money into LinkedIn platform. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'm all on it. I think I have that app, did I? Well, for, for anybody that's listening, you can find Nicole on LinkedIn. Yes. Because I know she's on there. Um, you can find myself on LinkedIn. I'm on Follow there. us. Uh, check out the article that we wrote about uh, sure. Del Mar. About why uh, why it's a sexy oh, place yeah. to yes. to hold a, a barbecue one. championship. I read that. That was a yeah. good one. So we're gonna keep putting some stuff out on there, and uh, we want people to follow us. Let us know what you're what you guys are doing. Um, but also, we appreciate. You're all the first person that comes up on my LinkedIn. Is it? Yeah. Cute. Do you, you have anyone have else? Yeah. You following? Um, you and my wife. Are we connected? That's good. It's a small circle. That's a good tribe. Fuck yeah, dude. I got tons I'll of I'll accept you. So that'll yeah. be three. There you go. Three. Yeah. There we go. See, I'm moving Just up. Helps my You're numbers. moving up. You're yeah. moving up. Awesome. I'm I'll, in. I'll endorse in. you too. <laughs> <laughs> my um, response. I'll, I'm really king of responses. I'll endorse your social media skills. Yeah. No, I'm going to get better at it, man. I know. Right? You, you've come you. a long way. 
It's hard. What, hap- I'm, what I'm, happened when you let Sean into your life? No, I, I think we talked about it. I just, I fucking never liked social media. I was never like a big proponent of it. And it's where everything's going. And I have to change. And yeah. change is hard. It's Sorry. not a fad, yeah. social media. It's no. not a fad. Digital marketing is definitely yeah. definitely No, I get it. Fad. Like I said, I'm, I'm not uh, naive to it. Right. It's just um, change is hard, and especially running the businesses and doing different things and yeah. having two kids and going home. Like you say, you just don't have the time, but yeah. I'll figure it out. Well, I, and I think that, I mean, what I see with my students is that they use, they understand social media platforms for social but it's different to run social media as a business. business. And that's the piece I see as a disconnect. Also, you were asking me earlier about teaching. And I think that's just fascinating to me because I would think that generation (coughs) would be like so far ahead of us, the rest of us dinosaurs that would be like, and the fact that, you know, the dinosaurs are teaching them how to do it for business. is like, it's crazy. I mean, I do a presentation um, called your assumptions about Gen Y and social media are, are all wrong because it's, just because they grew up with the phone in their hand doesn't mean they can build your brand yes. for your barbecue or Absolutely. your you know right. your store or my event company. Like well, it's I mean, a yeah, very just, different way. Just because they're on the platform doesn't mean they understand the analytics Absolutely behind not. it and the calls all those call to action yep. behind those analytics. Right. Exactly. Because that's where the wealth is. Yep. Where you're like, well, I'm actually spending all this time on Snapchat. Yeah. But you know, everyone's coming from Instagram. Yeah. Or is Snapchat a fucking from- thing? Dude, Snapchat. Oh, business? Talk about we have we have a filter. I thought it was yeah. just like, we built our own geo filter for yeah. Snapchat. That's I thought awesome. people are Dick using the shit out of it. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Corey and no. Corey and Layla have been all over getting the, our geo filter, fil- and it's like I got on Snapchat because Gary V was you know yeah again. get the fuck on yeah. Snapchat yeah. Yeah. blah blah yeah. blah, and I'm like all right fine here's my Bitmoji. I'm on Snapchat and I have all these other people that I never interact with on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I never interact with on Twitter. Yeah. I'm on they don't respond to my emails. Right. But all of a sudden I'm on Snapchat. And they're like, hey, awesome. you know, you guys are, I saw you guys up at Del Mar. I'm like, what the fuck? He's yeah. like, oh, yeah, you're, I saw you on yeah. Snap. I'm like, so cool. okay, well, I guess now I know where you are. Yeah. Which is powerful for us because that's all people that I know and that we right. do business with. And the whole reason you're on is for awareness. Right. You and, know? and, and it, I mean, again, target market, right? That's probably the people yeah. who are getting into the business, starting businesses. Yep. So th- those are the people who are probably going to learn most from you yep. versus the, you know, 65 year old guy who's been doing barbecue in his backyard. He's probably yeah, he's not, not on Snapchat. Yeah. He's definitely not, probably on Snapchat, not on Instagram, but he's probably not at a place in his life also where he's like, okay, now I'm going to start my barbecue company. Yeah. Right. So the fact that you're catering to that generation that is on snap, yeah. those are your future barbecue Rock Absolutely, stars, for sure. You know, so that's that's perfect that you well, guys are there. Anybody that wants to n- know or talk to an event rock star, <laughs> um, somebody that's writ- she's written her own book, working on her next book, working on her podcast, uh, somebody that we admire very, very dearly. We're very uh, happy to have you in our tribe. Thank you. Um, and you're always welcome here in the oh, podcast studio it. behind the smoke. Oh my God, uh, please it. follow her on Twitter and all her social platforms, please tweet at us. Um, your guys' call to action, come down to the barbecue festival, participate, um, hashtag get involved. We need people to get involved. Um, so the more that you interact, let us know what you like, what you don't like, write a review, subscribe to the podcast. And, uh, thank you so much thank for you. coming out here. We really, yeah, really appreciate you. your time. Uh, you're absolutely welcome. It. I mean, I w- and I know I will just close by saying I am, immensely proud of you oh thank you that means From, that means a lot yeah, to me no it's legitimately i am i mean i don't know what the rest of you fools are on the table <laughs> but, but but sean i mean just to know like i i knew you were going to do well because you you did well in my class not i'm not saying i could you know academically but no but you were like the sponge that you wanted to know and be better and i could well, see I that took, sitting I, in my class I took that extension program mm-hmm. you know to make the restaurant better because yeah. i knew that events self-producing our own events yeah. at yeah. the restaurant would help us marketing would help yep. us get more people to the door right and we highly encourage people to use events as a platform to market their business yeah absolutely you know, um, absolutely ask nicole about it because she's yeah. fucking amazing she's amazing so thank <laughs> yeah, you so much You're thank you for welcome. your time Rock on, my friend. thank you guys